Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to look at how can we come up with the regression line um, in RTI-84. I will talk in another video about how each of these values, the M and the B, are actually calculated. But basically what your calculator is doing is it's trying to find the line that minimizes the distance, the average distance from each of the individual points. Um, it is a very complicated formula that does take a lot of time to do by hand, so it is very um, advisable to do this in either a graphing calculator or some sort of statistics software. And depending upon the course that you are in, because line of best fit is used in algebra classes and it's also used in statistics classes, and so if you're in an algebra class, you would just use y equals mx plus b. You wouldn't actually put um, the hat on it, or you may see it as y hat equals ax plus b. Um, but this is the um, slope-intercept form of an equation of a line that we're used to seeing in an algebra class. Most stats textbooks write it where you have your y hat, and a lot of times we'll name our variables, which I'll write that out after we get the answer, equals this is going to be our y-intercept or our starting point, b is going to be our slope, and then x is going to be whatever our x explanatory variable is. So in this case, our age is going to be our explanatory, and our systolic blood pressure is going to be our response variable. So what we're going to do is the first thing that you want to do is take your calculator and put your x variable into L1 and your y into L2. I have already done this, um, but just to remind you where to go, you would just do stat and edit. And L1 and L2, I've already populated. You can see that the 16, 109, 25, 122, all of this has been verified. So I did put all of this data in beforehand so you didn't have to watch me type it in. Um, if you accidentally delete a column, you come in here and say L1 is missing and you want to use L1. So let's say that we accidentally deleted it instead of cleared it. To restore any of your lines, just hit Stat and Setup Editor and it brings back any lists you accidentally deleted. So if you had accidentally deleted L1, that's how you get it back. If you want to clear everything, remember you do have to highlight and clear. I'm not going to do that because I want this information in here. Um, it's always advisable to just kind of glance at the scatter plot before you fit a regression equation to it. Um, in some other videos, I will show you how to do a regression or a residuals plot so that you can use that also to decide whether a line is the best fit. So just let's look at this for a second to make sure a line actually fits it. Um, if you hit second y equals, that'll get us to our stat plots menu. And we do want to make sure that there's nothing in y equals itself because sometimes you have problems there. So I'm not going to do that. So I want to do second y equals. Plot 1 is on and scatter plot is already selected, so I'm not going to change it. So I'm just going to hit zoom and 9. And it will show us what our plots look like. And if you look at this, this does very much like look like a linear equation, except for this point, all of these seem to have a very, very strong linear trend. So it is advisable to use a linear regression equation for this. So what we're going to do to come up with the equation is we are going to hit stat and go over to calculate. And depending upon the course that you are in, you will either choose option four or option eight. If you're in an algebra class or your textbook uses the equation y hat equals mx plus b or y hat equals ax plus b, then you would choose option four. If you're using majority of the stats textbooks out there, then you would use linreg a plus bx. So they will both give you the same thing. It's just the order that it's written in. Um, just consult your text to see which one. Since my textbook that I use right now happens to use four. I'm going to use option four. It really doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, just make sure that you know how to write it the way that you are supposed to. Okay, so option four, I'm going to use L1 for my X list, L2 for my Y list. If you put it in a different list, you would just tell it at that time. We want the frequency list to be blank, and I'm going to use this feature because I am going to make some predictions. Um, so store regression equation, what we are going to do is, it's, it's kind of complicated, but you're going to hit the vars, which represents the variables. What we want to do is we want to store our regression into our y equals screen. That way we can graph and see the line of best fit, and we can use it to make predictions. So if I hit vars, 
I'm going to go over to the y variables because we're trying to sort into y and we're dealing with a function. So we're going to use option one and we're going to use option one again for y1. So what it's going to do is this is telling me that it's going to store it in the regression equation. Um, I will show you after I run this what it should look like because I know that some of your calculators will not have this list. So some of your calculators, when you hit the LinReg, this is all that shows up. Basically what you would do is the same steps that I did here. You would just do right next to it before hitting enter. You would do the vars, the y vars, um, option one for functions and option one for y1. And so it would just say lin reg ax plus by1 as long as you used l1 and l2. But I'll show you what that should look like in just a second. Um, my mouse just disappeared. So now if we hit enter and calculate, What happens is this right here is going to be our slope. So depending upon what format you're writing in, this does give us our equation. And if you go to the y equals screen, it does store it in here as long as you did the vars, y vars, option one. Okay, so um, it does store it into the y equals screen. And if you look at this, like if I come back to here, um, I know it did erase everything so that I can write it down, but if I hit second entry, this is what your command should look like if that screen did not come up. L1 tells it which X list to use, L2 tells it which Y to let, list to use, and then the Y1 is storing it into here. So at this point right here, if you have an older calculator, um, that's what you would have to do is at this point, if this was not in here, you would do the vars, the y vars, option one, one. And so like I said, this is just if this is what comes up on your screen. The comma is found above the seven. So this is what it would look like if you didn't get that prompt screen to come up. All right, so like I said, this is our equation if we wanted in y equals ax plus b. So let me go ahead and write it down in all of the formats. Um, so if you're using this format, we would write it as y hat, and the y hat represents that you're making a prediction. It differentiates it from um, the y, the actual y coordinate. So these are actual y values. This is a predicted value. So I can use this to make predictions. We use a different notation so that we can keep track of things. So if you are using the y equals mx plus b format, this is what your equation would look like. If you're in an algebra class, you would just leave the hat off. Um, if you are using this textbook, which most stats textbooks use, you would just switch the order. So we would do y hat equals, and this is option eight in your calculator, 80 plus two, 8.241 plus 1.629x. And if you're doing it the real statistics way, um, like I said, there's a lot of different methods out there, which is why I'm doing so much, is you would actually, if you were doing this in the real world, probably name it and say that this is the systolic blood pressure. And so you would actually name your variable so that you know what it represents, and then you would just put a hat over it. 80.241 plus 1.629, and I'm just gonna move this over just a tad, times the age. So like I said, this is probably the most preferred method of doing the calculator or writing down your equation in a statistics class, but my textbook that I teach from now uses this method, and if you're in an algebra class, it also uses this method. There's really no difference between the two, so I use it for both algebra classes and stats classes that I teach. Um, so if you want to make predictions, making predictions, you can either, let's say that we wanted to make a prediction for um, age, somebody that's 53. Okay, and maybe we want to make something, I'm looking at my range of values, maybe we want to make a prediction for somebody that is, say, 25. Okay, and maybe we want to make a prediction for somebody who is 85. 
Okay. When you're making these predictions, the first thing that you want to check to see is, is the prediction meaningful? Your prediction should be within the range of your values of X. So if I look at this from 16 to 70, if the H falls between 16 to 70, then it's a meaningful prediction using this equation. For this value right here, this would be a not a meaningful prediction because you're extrapolating. An extrapolation um, just means to predict outside of the known data set. If you look at mathematical models like hurricane models or something, they're usually not as accurate when you are predicting outside of the known information. If you try to go too far into the future, a lot of times you make mistakes. So if you're trying to predict too far away from what is known, um, you're extrapolating, and a lot of times this is what causes mistakes. So you want to avoid that. You could make a prediction, but it's not probably going to be very accurate. Um, to go back and explain some of these things, this is saying that at age zero, your y-intercept would be 80.241, so your systolic blood pressure would be this at age zero. Um, age zero could be meaningful. That could be birth. Um, you're zero years old. You were just born. Um, the 1.629 means that your systolic blood pressure increases um, by 1.629, um, and I don't remember what my units were, um, but whatever the units were, they, it, the blood pressure increases by 1.629 for every year that you get older. So if you have to interpret the slope and the y-intercept, that's what you would do. I know I'm trying to throw a lot into here, I'm just trying to cover a lot of bases in this video. So with my predictions, like I said, I can use my calculator. Let me pull my calculator back up. So I'm going to predict for 53 and 25. Um, what you can do is there's two methods that you can do. I can go to my vars and I can pull up the um, y vars. I can pull up y1. And then I can use parentheses and I can plug any value in and I put it in parentheses. It's saying in my Y1 equation, plug in 53. Okay, so with this, this is what the predicted value would be. So if I go back into here, remember that we stored our regression equation. That storing the regression equation, that's what it did is it plugged it into here. So now when I look at the graph, it actually has my line of best fit in there. So you can see that it fits the data very well. So our predicted value, if I plug in value for x, you could plug it into this equation here, but we rounded it, so we're not going to get as accurate of a prediction. If you use technology to help you make predictions, you can see, let me go back out of here, um, that y1 is 53 is approximately 167. So we would say that our predicted value or our predicted systolic blood pressure would be approximately 167, okay? Because I would round it to the nearest whole number. I would just use the same values that they used up there. Um, another way that you could do it, and if you wanted to do another one, like I could do second entry, and I could change the value of whatever I wanted this to be. This is probably the more complicated way of doing it, but it is a way of doing it. So the other predicted value, sorry, I'm selecting the wrong thing is 25, and we can see that we would predict it to be about 121. So our predicted systolic blood pressure at 25 is approximately 121. Okay, another way that you can get those or make predictions, like if you have to plug a lot in, this can be time consuming. If you just need one or two, this is pretty easy. But if you wanted more, there's another way that you can do it. And what you wanna do is you wanna go to your table set, which is second window. And I wanna change the independent, the explanatory variable to ask. That way I can plug in any value for X. Um, and then I can go to my second table and I can make predictions. So I could plug in the 53 and hit enter and it gives me my systolic blood pressure. I could plug in the 25 and get a systolic blood pressure. If I needed to find it for like 34, I can plug it in and it automatically plugs it in and gives me the output. So it's much quicker. I use tables a lot more often than doing the other method that I showed you. I just wanna show that there is multiple ways. 
I could make a prediction for 85, but again, 219 seems really unreasonable. That seems very high for blood pressure. And so it's not meaningful. Once you get to a certain point beyond what is known, a lot of times it's not meaningful. So it's best just to say that that's not meaningful. I know I covered a lot of bases in this video. If you have questions, please make sure you ask. There's a lot of information that can be done and a lot of ways that you can do it differently. So please just let me know if you have questions. As always, thanks for watching.